I guess the the cliche is the modern the modern left, whatever people call it, like the you know capital L tribal left, seems to be being indoctrinated not by left wing policy ideas. It's not about necessarily socialism. It's about identitarianism. It's about policy based on your immutable characteristics and how, you know, like uh, going back to the Green New Deal, like in the bill, it talks about racial equity. What does that have to do with the environment? Well, what does that mean? <laughs> um, well, equality would be like you, you equal opportunity. Two people are allowed to try. And if one succeeds, congratulations. Equity would be, well, let's determine whether or not you are advantaged or privileged and then hold you back or push you forward based on these, these certain metrics, I suppose. It's, it's, the, the problem I have with it is that it's not quantifiable. So this was actually something that was really shocking to me. I was sitting with my niece uh, and my, my sister, my niece and my mom, and I showed this image that people like to share. It's three people standing up by a baseball uh, a fence, and you, there's, a base, there's a baseball game. There's a really short person who can't see. There's a medium-sized person who can see a little bit, and a very tall person who just stands right up above the fence. It says, this is equality. Each of them gets one crate. Well, one crate isn't enough for the short guy, and the two guys can already see. It says, this is equity, and it shows the short guy getting you know three crates so they can all see now. And I said, the problem is, when it comes to someone's height, Sure, we can understand. Let's 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 give the the crates to the short guy so he can see along with us. But how do you determine equity based on the color of someone's skin or their you know like uh, characteristics that can't necessarily be quantified, right? So when Alexandria Ocasio Cortez pushes a bill forward that's purporting to be about the environment but includes racial equity clauses, are we to assume that her ideology states that if you are not white, you are poor by def- like it's a guarantee, or do we have to assume that each individual has different advantages different cards to play and some are born wealthy some aren't and yes there's historic racism but we can't make those assumptions right right so this is this is to me one of the biggest problems i've been having as like a lifelong left-leaning individual is who do i vote for right i was a big fan of bernie sanders for a while but then bernie sanders gets up on stage at the debates and says white people don't know what it's like to be poor well but that, that's hilarious that is yeah. hilarious. go to fucking west virginia and visit the coal miners right and you know what's really weird i saw one of bernie's tweets that I looked at it and I said, oh, come on, man. You know this is fucked up. Yeah. He was talking about how much more money white men make than black women, mm-hmm. than Latino men, than all these different things. And what he didn't include was Asian men. Well, Because well, Asian right. men make more money. But here's what I think a lot of people on the right miss. He said pay equity, not pay equality. Okay? I think perhaps we should stop assuming they don't know what they're saying. Because a lot of people assume what they're saying is, you know, the, the, gender cap, the, the gender earnings gap is, is real, but the gender pay gap, it, you know, it's not. Um, the, the, if a man and a woman are both offered the exact same job, exact same experience in education, women tend to get, I think it's like 3 to 5% less. And many people believe that's because they, they're less likely to negotiate, which is why you have like lean in, tell women to be more, you know, trying to be more assertive. Um, but it's not this 77% number that's, but there is an earnings gap, Right. The median salaries of men and women are different. So when Bernie says white men make X more than these other demographics, he said in his tweet, pay equity, not equality. He doesn't want fair pay for everyone based on job. He's actually saying it doesn't matter what job you have. Everyone should be paid the same. Yeah, that's nonsense. But then you see what Cortez releases on her website. If you're unwilling to work, they'll provide economic security. They actually, I, I believe they took it off the site, right? But I think when they include it in the bill, that they want equity, not equality. When they include on their website, if you're unwilling, they'll pay you. And when Bernie says equity as well, I think they're not talking about equality. Like, I don't think, you know, the average American understands what they're actually saying is you should be paid a flat rate, period. And when you're talking about the pay gap being different from men and women, we should clarify that what you're saying essentially is that men choose different jobs and they work more hours. And that's right. the reason why they make that much more money where it's 77 cents on the dollar. Yeah, there, there was a, a, an, another study came out recently that said that hours worked was almost the uh, 100% of the reason why men and women earn different uh, yeah. at a median, median salary. In some areas, uh, women actually earn more than men. Uh, and there's, I think, seven cities... I think this was on Pew. Again, you, you, you fact check me if you get, you know, everybody thinks I'm wrong or whatever. But uh, I believe it was seven cities where women out earn men by like seriously high numbers, like up to 20%. So there's a lot of issues when it comes to the pay gap and equality. But I, without going on a tangent in that area, I think what ends up happening is, you know, I saw Bernie's tweet and I responded to it by saying, good news, Bernie, pay equality is enshrined in law. 
And I cited, I, I, I cited three examples of where it's illegal to discriminate based on gender. And then someone pointed out to me, Tim, he didn't say equality. He said equity. That would imply it doesn't matter what job you have. A petroleum engineer should earn the same as a store clerk at H&M. That's equity. That just because you have an advantage because of your education doesn't mean you should earn more than somebody else. You see what I'm saying? So the fact that there's people that actually believe that, that don't believe that we're, well, th- well, first of all, that's going to absolutely discourage people from trying to succeed. Why would you? If you could get the same amount as a CEO of Exxon as you can working at 21 Forever, or Forever 21 or whatever, Abercrombie and Fitch, why would you why would you try hard? Why would you exceed? Why would you succeed? Why I, would you excel? I think it's fair to point out some people would. You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't but, but know look, if look. they would if there's no if there's no real. I mean, other than social status, if there's no right. real but that's, positive that's, consequences. I, I think social status might be one of the prime driving factors of of most people. I don't know, man. Not enough. Not enough to really encourage innovation. But look, and, look. and progress. I, I I can agree with that for sure. But I also think there's. Uh, there was a saying that I was told a lot that people don't get rich because they want money. They get rich because they're passionate about something and the money comes after. You know, they always say that the money comes after or something like that. And I'd, I'd point out every every day I take no days off. It's been a couple of years with me not taking any days off. I work literally every day full time. Right now I'm producing six YouTube videos every day. Only one of them is a real. Seven days a week? Seven days a week. Nonstop Damn, for son. two years straight. The fuck you doing to yourself? I like it. It's fun. And that's the thing. I'm, <laughs> right. not, I'm not doing it You're because there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I do it because... You know, I see things on, uh, so for the most part on, on my main YouTube channel, I do one video every day at 4 PM, which tends to be just like a news analysis piece, but I'm not perfect. Sometimes I, you know, get all hyperbolic and stuff. My second channel is me just ranting and, you know, not really swearing, but still just like heavy opinion stuff. Mm -hmm. I do it because it's fun. You know, I see something, I want to explore it. Uh, I used to travel all the time. You know, when I worked at Vice, I was in all these different countries and all these dangerous places, not because I wanted to have a name for myself, not because I wanted to make money. I wanted to watch a revolution. I wanted to know why it was happening and I want to talk to the people who are experiencing it. So I can, I can, I can relate to people who say money isn't a motivator for sure, but I've also talked to people in Scandinavia who have told me they sort of give up at a certain point because I can't remember which country it was. It may have been Sweden or, uh, or Norway, but these two women told me that after like $77,000 per year, they tax like 80% of your income. So people just stop. They literally well, just stop. Well, that's another proposition, right? This is something else that's been discussed in mm. terms of anyone who makes more than X amount per year taxing them over 70%. So I, I agree with the progressive tax wholeheartedly. I disagree with a number that high. What do you think it should be? I don't, I don't know, but I will say we need more progressive brackets. We need to keep going. And, you know, I got to say maybe maybe at $10 million, 70% does make sense, but I kind of lean towards not really because it seems like, man, that's a lot of money. That's a lot. That's 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 more. That's that's a ridiculous amount. You know, I think uh, Steve Bannon said something like a five in front of it or something, but I don't know. I'm not an economist, but I do believe a progressive tax makes the most sense. And I, I can explain it to you if you want to hear it. Sure. So there was a study, I, I, I believe it was from Harvard, um, you need $77,000 per year, this may have been 10 years ago, in order to be middle class median in the United States. That means if you make $77,000, you'll have a vacation, you'll have insurance, you'll have a car, you can raise a family, you can send them to school, all that stuff. But you have nothing left over for savings, you have nothing left over for investments. If you make $100,000 a year, you're going to have $23,000 left over for investing. Eventually, at a certain point, if you only need $77,000, if you're making $10 million, You've got nine, you know, million nine hundred nine thousand that you can invest and just be independently wealthy and be rich forever. Now, I have no problem with being wealthy. I have no, I have no problem with other people being wealthy and, and living off of their investments and all that. But there is a point where you have to realize the, the 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 coalescing of power, the monopolizing of power, is a really dangerous thing for any society. Too few individuals holding too much power can destabilize an economy, can destabilize a country. The problem with communism: you snap your fingers and you put a centralized authority in place. At least that's how it's been every single time. And then they hold all the cards and they can oppress whoever they want. The problem with laissez-faire capitalism is over time, which is why it's better in in a lot of ways, over time it eventually becomes a centralized oligopoly of a few corporations controlling everything, which we're kind of seeing now. So all a progressive tax can really do is slow that process down, which I think is a good thing. But ultimately, I think just looking at the system, eventually you end up kind of where we are, where six media companies control everything. And then, you know, some companies are the biggest funders of certain politicians and corporations. They just have too much power. I mean, there, there's a, 
I, I remember reading a, a report or a story about how wealthy people have like three or four times more ability to influence a politician than like the majority of the people in the country simply because paying for expensive dinners and lobbying earns you favors. You know, super PACs paying, you know, guaranteeing funding for, for a politician earns you favors. So it's, you know, look, if, if a million people tell me they want, you know, X, but the people who are paying me, like pay, funding my campaign are paying me more, well, who am I going to provide favors to? And then once I'm done with my campaign run, I can go to a job at their company. Yeah, th these are problems. So without going on too big of a rant, I think ultimately a progressive tax can help slow the process down of special interests acquiring too much power. Eventually it happens anyway. But with a flat tax, you're basically saying at a certain point, you can just keep dumping more and more money into different investments, making more and more money and increasing your power exponentially and other people can't catch up to you. And then power right. becomes too quick, right? Yeah, I, I think in this country, we try to look at Su success and achievement is something that everyone's striving for and we don't want to put any restrictions on that yeah we look at capitalism as the reason why everything's going so great over here this is america land of the free home of the brave go out there and kick ass we're not going to saddle you down with debt um, but it, it makes sense that after a while as we're seeing today but i don't mean what is what's the best way to do it? i mean socialism is not going to work what 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 does work I think a mixed economy. A mixed economy. Uh, where we are right now, right? A portion of income is paid in taxes for mm -hmm. government programs, for the right. for the um, uh, for defense and things like that. I just think we have a big problem with corruption. I think we've got bloat. I think we've got government agencies that instead of reforming and breaking them down, we just slap more band aids on top. Mm -hmm. you know, we got a festering wound, and we're putting bandages over bandages. You know, it's like at a certain point you got to redo it. We also have systems that are in place that I mean, in, in terms of like the way communities have always existed in certain communities, there's just poverty and crime and no one does anything to fix it. Right. And it seems to be that we're, we're more than willing to go to other countries and nation build. We're more, oh, than, dude. more than willing to pump money into s different countries, especially if they have natural resources. But in our own country, we're not, I mean, the, the greatest resources, of course, human beings. And the best way to make America great or stronger would be to have less losers. Well, what's the best way to have less losers, to have more people succeed? What's the best way to have more people succeed? Give them more opportunity and chance to not be stuck in a quagmire, not be trapped in a ghetto. This is, yeah, so um, I believe we should allocate excess from other areas to improve the, yes. the you know, certain areas. In that sense, I believe in socialism to a certain extent. Like, but I, I believe in it with with fire departments, I believe in it with the police department, I believe we should spend money that comes out of, you know, the public pool to fix things. Right. I look at New York. There are some neighborhoods that are really bad, some neighborhoods that are really good. Well, if we take excess from the really great neighborhoods and use that to fix roads, pay for schools and poor neighborhoods, crime is one of the biggest correlations for crime is poverty. Yes. So if we can get better schools, we need to reform the school system straight up. Yeah. Um, if we can get better hospitals, if we can fix the roads, then we're doing a lot to reduce crime and reduce poverty and a rising tide lifts all ships. Yes. So that's why, you know, I, that's why I like Bernie Sanders. Although yeah. I will, I say, I make sure I tell people like he is a little too left for me. He is. But when we, when we were looking at who we had in 2016, I was like, yeah, Bernie's my guy.